Lawyers for American student Amanda Knox say they are pleased with the way her two days of testimony in an Italian court went. The 21-year-old spent most of Friday and Saturday on the stand denying charges that she murdered her British roommate. Knox's father was in the courtroom during those proceedings. This is the first time that anybody has ever heard her as an individual. Uh, there's been this horrific picture painted of her, of who she really isn't. Let's bring in Lisa Green, legal analyst and NBC News producer, to talk about this. Good morning. Good morning, Alex. You know, watching all this, the prosecution didn't seem to be able to rattle Amanda Knox. She stuck to her story. She talked in fluent Italian, even dismissing her translator and saying, no, let me take over because you're not doing it and expressing it the way I want you to. So does this bode well for her? I think it bodes really well from her, at least from this side of the pond. I mean, look, two days of testimony in Italian. She was composed, yet had a lot of energy, and she insisted that she was railroad into confessing. Now, on the other hand, Alex, I would just say home field advantage not available to Amanda here. Remember, she's a foreign student overseas in an unfamiliar court system. What we really don't know is how Italian jurors are hearing this testimony, especially since there's going to be a six-week break and they have a lot to remember. Yeah, but, but yeah, I would say she did really well. With the prosecution having rested now before they continue with the defense, um, let's take a listen to a little bit of Amanda on the stand herself. So let's listen, everyone. They called me a stupid liar, and they said that I was trying to protect someone. I was very, very scared because they were treating me so badly. It was five months of the prosecution going after her, very unflattering, uh, very aggressive with it. Do you think that she's done enough to dissuade what they have done in, in the minds of the Italian jurors? Because you make a great point. It's not an American jury, the pool that we're looking at. The prosecution did a really good job of portraying Amanda Knox as a hard-partying American college student. And remember, Amanda herself admits she was doing drugs with her boyfriend on the night of the murder. On the other hand, that's not tantamount to evidence proving her complicity in this murder. And when it comes to that evidence, the DNA evidence, the blood evidence, prosecutors didn't really move the ball forward that much. And now their story will be subjected to intense defense cross-examination. And, and also alibi, because she is claiming that she was with her former boyfriend, Rafael Solicito. What's he saying? Well, he isn't saying much. He does say he was home that night. But here's what the defense lawyers are going to do, and it's a standard play, but it can have a significant impact in this case. They're going to go over the DNA evidence. Why is the best Amanda Knox DNA evidence in her boyfriend's apartment and not at the crime scene? And Which bodes well for her. Bodes very well for her. The blood evidence has similar flaws. And here's another thing, Alex. The defense is expected on Friday to start with testimony from Amanda's mother. Already this past weekend, we had a college friend of Amanda's testify that she was very happy in Perugia, liked her roommates a lot, worked three jobs to be able to afford to go. Hmm. That's a much more sympathetic picture of Amanda, and that may resonate with Italian jurors as well. And if you were you know, counseling the, the defense, is that what you would say? Keep this all about Amanda and, and the sympathy and, and, and all of that? Oh, or you, I try, you poke holes in the prosecution as well? Absolutely. Remember, they start with a narrative, and in this case, the prosecution's narrative was satanically induced sex game gone horribly wrong. They haven't done a lot to forward that theory. The defense can dismantle it, but add very significant uh, advances when they poke holes at the forensic evidence in this case, which is actually fairly weak. Okay. Lisa Green, NBC News producer, legal analyst, all of that. Thank you so much. Pleasure, Alex.